Hey guys, Kevin Zellman here with your voice recap on Hugh Hollywood for Get Real LOL. And this is where you can get your fix of all entertainment news all day, every day. So this was an absolutely insane week on The Voice, and we had one of the best performances on any competition show. I think we all know who I'm talking about here. Uh, so before we get into everything about this week, uh, we will then be joined by Team Adam's Keith Semple. And then after that interview, we are going to be discussing who our Voice Season 9 finalists are. It's very exciting, guys. Uh, so starting off the night was Barrett Baber. He took on Ella Henderson's Ghost, and he put a country spin on it, and I really liked this. I liked seeing this side of Barrett. I mean, I liked, I've been liking all the sides we've seen of him, but what I like most is that we know he's able to sing a pop song and make it his own. Obviously, this isn't his first time that we've seen this, but it just solidified that he can pretty much do anything he wants to. Then we had Emily Ann Roberts, and she took on Dolly Parton's 9 to 5. And as usual, it was a great performance by Emily. She showed a side that we haven't seen from her before. She was sassy up on the stage. I really, really liked it. Uh, you can tell that she had the most fun with this performance out of all the other ones that she has done on the show. So I talked to both Barrett and I talked to Emily after they performed, and they told me how they felt after their performances, and they also have a special message for their fans. Check it out. You are great tonight. Thanks, How do you feel coming off the stage? Um, I feel good. It's, it's a bit of a relief because, you know, I did what I could do and, and I think everybody saw that I, I didn't have any left Hello. in the tank. Look at this one. <laughs> this interview in. just got good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I left it all out there and, and, um, and so I'm really comfortable with, with whatever the result is tomorrow. You know, I hope that I, I get a chance to sing in the finale. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, over the course of the show that I've, I've continued to grow as an artist and, and show everybody that, uh, that I bring my A game every time mm -hmm. and, and, and certainly you know, left it all out there tonight. So I hope I get the chance, but also real comfortable with whatever the result is because uh, tonight was, was an emotional thing for me to really pour it all out there and just send it out there and, and see what, see what right. the public says. Um, I was really excited. That was the most fun I've ever had. Um, I was very giggly. <laughs> and Blake always makes fun of my laugh. And so like, I hugged him and I was like, <laughs> like laughing and I was like he's probably hating his life right now but um, <laughs> you know it, it was just an awesome feeling to be able to sing a Dolly song and really just let loose on the stage and I was gonna say you were very sassy on stage <laughs> we haven't really seen from you so how did that feel it was awesome that's what I wanted to do I wanted to just have fun and and I, I think I accomplished that mm -hmm. and for you you've taken a few songs now and put like a country spin on it so how do you find the song and you think you know what this could sound good with a country spin on what has to like be in the song prior to you turning over well the the key is is if it's a good song in any genre um, most of the time it has a really big melody and uh, and a really catchy uh, moment especially in the chorus and um, and this song certainly had all those things so this is Blake Shelton's idea for me and he sent me an email saying hey man I got an idea for a song you know check out this Ella Henderson song and and you know initially I thought well I don't know I don't know if I want to take a, a pop song you know maybe I should you know do something classic right. just like last week but the truth is, you know, I feel like it was a risk for me to do this song, and uh, but I also totally, totally believe in my coach and uh, and and rely on his expertise. He's won this thing a bunch of times. If uh, if Blake Shelton tells you this is a good song to, to try to make it to the finale, then I'm gonna listen to him. And what's been your favorite performance so far? For both of you, uh, I feel like, you know, I feel like tonight was really one for me that um, that I'm really gonna hang my hat on for a long time. Um, not necessarily because it's exactly the kind of songs that I'll make um, beyond this experience, but, but more because it was just a 100%, you know, pedal to the metal, giving it all I got mm -hmm. performance. And I, I think people will watch it and, and really connect with it. And I hope they do. I hope they vote for me and, and give me a chance to sing in the finale. And for you, Emily? Um, the last two weeks have been absolutely incredible. I got to take on a Patsy Cline song last week. And this week is raise the bar a little bit more to Dolly and I was I was really nervous about it but they have been so much fun um, these past two weeks so I'm either I can't really decide next we have Zach Seabaugh who performed Miley Cyrus's The Climb I thought this was a really good song choice for him where he was able he just stood there he did a whole George Strait thing which means he just stood at the mic stand and let his vocals do the talking or, or, or the singing in this case, I guess. Uh, he did a more than decent job with the song, but it wasn't his best. His coach, Blake Shelton, was fully behind him and he told America to make sure to vote for Zach. Zach told me how he felt after he performed and he also thanked his fans. Watch this.
I feel good. I'm really exhausted. This has been such a long week, but uh, to get out there on stage and to deliver a message like that, mm -hmm. um, I feel really good about it. And, you know, I hope that people can take my music seriously now. I've been all over the stage, and that's what I like to do. But, you know, for the people who think that's all I can do, I hope to... I George Straited it, as what as right. what Blake said, and I hope that they appreciated that. How did it feel to George Strait it and just kind of stand there and just sing the song without doing the hip gyrations and all that? Well, at this point in the competition, um, I've been working so hard, and it's emotionally exhausting and mentally exhausting. Um, and so just to be able to stand there and just sing those lyrics uh, meant a lot to me, especially at this point in the competition. So. What, what's been your favorite performance so far out of between your blind to now, what's been your all-time favorite? I think a lot of my fans can agree with me that Brand New Girl from was probably my favorite because that really was the breakout moment for me and mm -hmm. I think Blake agreed with me on that because um, before I was kind of holding a lot back and that really gave me a spark on the live stage and with it being the first live show. Um, so I'm very grateful to have had that opportunity. And what do you want to say to all your fans out there for helping you get to this point in the competition? Oh my gosh, I just want to thank all of you guys for all the support and voting and, and getting uh, my name up there on the iTunes charts every single week. Uh, it's meant a lot to me. And Team Gwen's Jeffrey Austin took on Cher's Believe. And right when I heard the song he was singing, I could not be more excited. Between the staging and the vocals, it was an absolute impeccable performance. Cher even tweeted him saying how much she loved it. You guys know, I mean, this song, it's more of a dance track, or it is a dance track, but Jeffrey, what I love is that he has an incredible ability to change up his song so that the lyrics are the main focus of the song, and that's exactly what he did this week with Believe. Brayden Sunshine sang Amazing Grace, and I thought that this was his best performance of his duration on the show. There were some notes that didn't quite hit the mark, but on the voice, religious tracks, they always seem to be a very popular, very smart song choice along with the voters. So this was a smart song choice for Brayden or Gwen or, or the producers, whoever chose it was a smart choice. Uh, so I talked to both of the members of Team Gwen, Jeffrey and Brayden, and they told me what their favorite performance has been on the show so far. And they also took a second to thank their fans. Uh, I feel amazing. I, I kind of, you know, sing my ass off and I've never really, um, I haven't gotten to do that as much. Um, so I felt really good and I feel like I left it all out there. Mm -hmm. This is the best I've felt coming off that stage ever before. I mean, this is, I'm the happiest with that performance that I've been with any other. I'm super happy about that. How did you feel when you found out you're gonna be singing a share song? Because that's that's kind of like a big feat to put to take on. You obviously did it. How did you feel when you first found out? Um, you know, it was something that me and the producers and Gwen were all throwing around there, so um, didn't come to ma that much of a shock. But um, you know, it was definitely a risk, and it's a big undertaking. It was like a massive hit uh, when it first was out, and. Um, you know, Ella Henderson did it as a cover as well and had some great success with that. So it was awesome. And then I found out that our um, music director, Paul Markovich, was her music director. And like a bunch of the band members are her former band members. So I got to sing Cher's song with Cher's band, which was pretty cool. So, um, you know, I was just excited because I love the way mm -hmm. that we had it arranged. And, um, you know, it meant a lot to me and it showed, you know, the kind of music I'd like to make. What do you want to tell your fans for taking you this far in the competition? How do you want to thank them? What do you want to say to them? Um, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity for doing something I've never been able to do or been too scared to do and you know making it this far is a dream and I never thought you know being one share turn that I would even have the opportunity to make the semifinals and so um, their support has really gotten me here and I couldn't have done it without them. I uh, Being here is just it blows my mind because I, I know I've said it before but I didn't think I was worth gas money like that's pretty sad <laughs> so I mean the fact that I'm in the voice top nine and the fact that we're competing to be in the finale that I can't even I can't thank anybody out there who's supported me enough I can't thank anybody enough because it's it's just such an amazing feeling next we have team Adams Amy Vashel who surprisingly didn't do a switch up this week I said it right here last week that I was dying to hear what Amy actually sounds like with, without all the creativity, and we got that this week with Bob Dylan's To Make You Feel My Love. Next was Jordan Smith, and if you guys watch the show, you know that I don't really have to say anything more here, but I'm still going to for those of you who didn't, don't worry. He absolutely 
owned Queen's Somebody to Love, beyond, between his beyond amazing vocals, the choir that surrounded him, the moment where he dropped to his knees to sing, that time where he was just mimicking the guitarist, it was literal perfection happening on the voice stage. This performance was the best performance by any contestant on any show, and I firmly stand by that. Not only was the crowd on their feet, the coaches were on their feet the entire time. Once Jordan finished, Adam went on the stage, he hugged Jordan and congratulated him. Adam took the mic and did a literal mic drop on the stage. So I talked to both Amy and Jordan immediately following their performances and find out what Jordan had to say about beating Adele on the iTunes charts. And then Amy, she thanked her incredible fans. Check it out. You're number one on iTunes right now. How do you feel about it? It's so crazy. Um, every week it's just so, such a shock at the support. And honestly, I couldn't have asked for anything more out of tonight's performance. I enjoyed it and that is what I think was most important. And so that's just like an added bonus for me. And I really appreciate that support and, and that people want to buy something that I've, I've done. But man, it's just so surreal to even, to even think about that. I know. It's just, <laughs> it's insane. You keep making it worse. I'm like, it's insane. <laughs> And Amy, I loved your performance as well. How do you feel, how do you want to thank your fans for getting you this far in the competition? Oh, I'm just, I'm so grateful um, for just the outpouring of support and encouragement through all of this. It's been overwhelming and, you know, I've, I've been so busy just working so hard, but um, I, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm so grateful. It's just, it's been one amazing experience. And also on Team Adam is Shelby Brown, and she had a great performance of Even God Must Get the Blues. She, I, I said this last week also, she has the most powerful voice of the females that are left in the competition. And you can tell that she absolutely left everything out on that stage. So the only member that is on Team Pharrell is Maddie Davis, and she took on Big Girls Don't Cry. And her French cafe props on stage and her guitar playing and then how she just seemingly floated across the stage turned this performance into one that screamed, I want to be in this finale, guys. She is dying to get there. And I actually I talked to both her and uh, Shelby and they told me how they feel when fans recognize them because they're not used to it yet. Shelby does a, a weird dinosaur pose. Check this out. Man, I'm just glad I got to sing a song that I love and something that meant something to me. And if this is my last performance, I am hella proud of it. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's how we're all feeling because I think there was a half a second where we all thought we would sell out to get into the finale. And then we all collectively, without talking to each other about it, we're like, that's not who we are. That's not what the season's about. That's not what the show is about. Um, you know, so we all pick songs that we loved and it showed in the performances and I think Man, that's what I'm proud of. That's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling proud and pride for be. all of my friends and for, you know, just this opportunity. I'm not, I shed one tear when I came off the stage and that was just because Pharrell was being really nice and then and then now all I feel is absolute joy. Another reason you feel so proud is because you guys have grown an enormous fan base. So how do you want to thank your fans for getting you this far in the competition and hopefully to the finale? Oh my God. I, how do you even thank I, them? I, exactly. I don't even know how to thank anybody because it's like, They'll never understand how thankful I am and how grateful I am. I'm sure I speak for Maddie, too, whenever I say that. It's yeah. like, we literally wouldn't be here if we didn't have fans. Yeah, exactly. And this whole show, to think about that this whole show is just based on voting and that people actually go out and vote because they're, you know, our music. right? And we get, we chart because people love not only the show, but they love us individually and they vote for us. And I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling to think about that and that we'll be leaving here with people that know who we are and like care who we are yeah. what is that and I just it's hard to talk about because it's so new for all of us but man just grateful just so grateful for every single person that's ever voted for any of us because and they're making dreams come true and it's 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 amazing I just want to go ahead and publicly apologize for anybody that I pterodactyl arm because I had. S <laughs> what does pterodactyl arm mean? Oh no, in the face, in the face. The because uh, I get, like if I don't see something coming, like I've had people come up to me and like get really excited, like but I don't expect it, and sometimes I forget. Like I literally have asked people when they say my name how they know it, <laughs> but like if someone comes out of nowhere, I'm like yeah. Oh, stop. This is a pterodactyl arm. Or, no, or is it a T Rex? T Rex. 
I say T-Rex. I don't. Yeah, my God, T-Rex. Come on. Show your shit. Dinosaur. I played with Barbies, not dinosaurs. I didn't. I didn't do either. So. All right. Well, congratulations. You guys, the best of luck. And now, you guys, I'm really excited to welcome Keith Semple to the show. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How's life been since The Voice? It's been pretty fantastic, really. Uh, I've been just as busy as ever, uh, working on original uh, original CD, and uh, been playing my shows. I came home to literally just sold out shows, and it's it's been ridiculous. I mean, I was doing well before anyway, but this is just kind of taking it over the top. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. Um, you were you were on Team Adam, and a lot of the artists they were saying that they people think that they have a lot more time with their coach than they actually do. The time that you did spend with Adam, what was like a memorable piece of advice that he gave you or just a memorable moment that you did have with Adam? For me, I preferred the moments when it was actually like off camera and he was being, he was able to be himself, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you wish you could have shown to America on the voice of a certain song or a certain genre of music that you wanted to see that you didn't get to show? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> what was I mean, it? People know me in, in this Midwest Chicago area as being like the crazy lead singer guy. And I didn't really get to show that. I got to show it like a little bit with Manny, you know, when we did the, you know, the Bob O'Reilly. And you got to see sort of like a little bit of me getting out of the box, but nobody got to see like the performer, Keith, you know, which is kind of what I'm most known for is being this guy who jumps about and has fun and everybody's entertained. And that is, the big regret really because there's so many people like my Facebook and my Twitter and all this stuff it's just been filled with people going what what were they thinking they didn't let Keith do what he does best you know they didn't let Keith like show how he can entertain a crowd how he can you know so that would be my my you know big regret you were on team Adam there were some artists that were stolen and had to maybe even three different coaches. Do you wish you had the opportunity to be with a different coach or are you happy that you were with Adam the entire time? You know what, I, you know, you, you come off this, this sort of show and you have to, you try to weigh up the good and the bad and, mm -hmm. you know, in your mind. And I look at it and really from a coach's standpoint, I couldn't have actually done any better in a sense, like, cause I won every single coach's choice right. up until that point. So like, you know, Obviously, I was I picked Adam, then I was picked to win the, you know, to, to win the the battle, and then picked to win the knockout. So it was kind of like I felt like I couldn't have had any more respect from Adam right. personally because he was like, well, it, it's going to be Keith, mm -hmm. you know. And then of course, when it was down to more than me and another person, it was me and three other people. Right. You don't feel as bad because you know it's a one in four chance, not a one in two chance, you know. Right. So, I, I one thing I'm surprised. And so I tweeted out that you're going to be on the show, and I had one uh, Twitter follower. They tweeted me a question. I thought it was really funny. I wanted to get your opinion on this, saying that right. they love you and they also love One Direction. Would you ever want to do a collaboration or be a part of the boy band? I well, I'm probably twice as old as any of them in it, <laughs> but. I, you know, I've been lucky enough to not look my age yet, so I guess that's, you know, a good thing, but, well, I've been there, done that, I've been in a boy band, I've done that side of things, so I want to move on, and, and I have this vision right now for where I want to go, uh, I've got this whole new sort of style of genre that I'm kind of trying to put out there, it's like a rock country crossover thing, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like Keith Urban meets... Geez, I don't know. It's like Keith Urban almost meets One Republic in a way, okay. you know, at, with, but with a kind of a rocky vocal over the top. It's it's so unique. I can't really say it sounds like one artist or another. Right. But I mean, let's face it. If One Direction approached me and said, "Hey, do you want to sing a song with us?" I'm not going to say no. <laughs> That's what I was figuring. <laughs> I'd have to be an absolute idiot to say no to right. that because they're obviously very successful, and I don't know much about them because it's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. But at the same time. Who, who wouldn't want to sing with a already established artist or artists? Of course. You, know? so. you, were, you were telling me you have a lot of stuff in the works, new music, albums, a bunch of stuff. Tell us a little bit or tell us everything about it. We all want to know. Yeah, I, w I want to tell you about the, just so you know what I just did in the last 10 days leading yeah. up to this. I flew out to Nashville last Sunday 
and I recorded my new CD. It's an EP, basically five songs. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, until the afternoon. Then I flew out to Tampa, Florida that night to do a corporate show for a company on the, fr- on the Thursday night in Tampa. Then I flew at 6.45 in the morning back to Chicago and did a show Friday night in Chicago and then a show Saturday night in Chicago. Oh, yeah. And then I had a day or two to do the other stuff that I was doing that's not on stage. And then I did a photo shoot yesterday for 12 hours and a video, half of a video shoot. And I'm getting it all ready for this new EP. It's going to be called Anytime Anywhere. It's basically, it's basically like me saying, this is what Keith really is. And I, you didn't get to see it on the show. But if you liked Keith on the show, this is what Keith wants to be. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, I'm very happy that somebody like Chris Stapleton did really well in the Country Music Awards Mm -hmm. this year because he isn't the same music as me, but he's similar in the sense that he's not your typical guy that you expect. He's got that really rocker soul voice, but he's singing sort of country music. And Mm -hmm. it's, you haven't heard that before. I mean, that's why he's doing so well. He's just so unique. And I'm hoping that this new record will be that again but for me you know like it'll be the breakout thing that i've been waiting on and obviously coming right off the voice if you can't tell i'm babbling because i'm so excited about it i love it uh, and i'm hoping that you know you'll get to hear sneak peeks of the song that uh, the, the single it's only going to be available on itunes because okay. i'm hoping that you know coming off the show and that people might want to you know like i can maybe chart and stuff like that's mm-hmm. something i can actually consider being a possibility at this point um which is crazy and exciting in itself um and then i'll wait a while before i give it on other other you know outlets but it'll be itunes for a while so um sometime around christmas probably but that all depends on how everything goes okay so i was i was gonna ask what it was and i didn't expect it to be that soon so that's very exciting you also you have a baby on the way right yeah yeah not to mention that right <laughs> <laughs> i mean that that there's so much going on and people do want to know i want to put you on the spot because i know people don't want to share it but do you know uh, the gender of the baby? People are dying to know. They were tweeting me this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. It's going to be a girl. We actually, I, I, I'll find the photo for you and I'll send it to you. Perfect. Um, the way we announced that we were actually going to be on the show was by announcing both at the same time. Oh, my God. So it's a picture of my daughter holding a picture and it says, my daddy will be appearing on this season of The Voice. And then on the other side, it says, my baby sister will be appearing on the world stage on fe- in February 2016. And it, it's just the most cute picture you've ever seen. So that's how I actually announced that I was going to be doing the show. So everybody's known it's a girl for a while, but I haven't told anybody the name uh-huh. yet. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm meant to do that or not. That's of the course. wife's decision, not mine. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I was not going to ask. I was going to let that one be. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, that that's another reason why I'm trying to get stuff done in a short time frame, too, because I don't want to be doing this type of schedule right now when when the baby's born. Like, right. I, I, I'm a really hands-on dad, mm-hmm. like, as you've probably seen from the show and stuff. Like, it, there, if there's one thing that the show got right about me, <laughs> it's the, you know, I am a real, like, I'm all about being a dad. Mm-hmm. And, like... You know, um, well, you know, right, right as I speak, you know, I've got my my daughters right there Aww. lying there. Oh, of course, it goes no sing <laughs> to the thing, but um, but yeah. Oh, oh, of course, I just completely messed it up. Now, let's see, can I get her back? There we go. Um, she's sleeping just upstairs right now. Aww. If you can see, yeah, in the bed there, it's kind of hard to see, but. You know, I mean, I'm with my daughter all the time, and I'm I plan on being with my second daughter all the time. Yeah. And so to do that, I have to work really hard to fight to make time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm one of these guys like I'll work hard for five days and get no sleep, and then do nothing for right. five days so I can spend it with my family. And that's, you know, that's the way I work. So, and if if the baby comes early, it'll come in January. If it doesn't, it'll come in February, and then we'll sort of work around all how it goes. You know. That's awesome. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. I cannot wait to hear the album, see where it's going. I'm very excited for you. Thank you. I, I uh, By the way, I did I did want to say yes. um, to you personally that I really appreciate your support on uh, throughout all this because I know, like, you know, everybody has their favorites or whatever, but, you know, you've been really supportive and I appreciate that and giving me the time and, it, 
you know, it wasn't required of you. It was just something that you did. So I appreciate that very much. That's nice of you. So thanks. Of course. I'm a huge fan of the show. And I love to be able to talk to the artist. So it's the least I can do. But, <laughs> well, I, but I, I appreciate you uh, realizing it and seeing the tweets. I'm sure you guys get a ton of them. So thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, I always try to. I'm getting good at social media finally. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a while, but I'm learning. So good. And will you be in town for the finale next week? I will be, yes. Perfect. Um, I, 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 t I take it you'll be there. I will be there. Point. Yes. Okay, so we'll, we will have a drink or say hi or whatever. Perfect. Gun deal. I like <laughs> it. Yes, both. Perfect. Works for me. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm thank you. I'm playing a show on the 17th um, in LA oh. with Victor and Coda. Oh, very cool. So, and possibly Amy, if she, you know, if she wants uh -huh. to, she's more than welcome. It's going to be at the Revamp Studios in Tuston. I oh, think. perfect. So you're more than welcome to come and, and hang out with us. Definitely. See, I'm going to be promoting the new songs and mm -hmm. stuff. And, and I've been wanting to do a show with Victor since we left the show, you know, right. and, and, and I'm now I'm going to get a chance to do that. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'll definitely try to make that seems like so much fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. No problem. Pleasure. All right. Let's talk to you later. All right. Cool. Bye. All right, guys, so now let's get right into the eliminations. I went into this show really nervous. I really had no idea who three of the four finalists were going to be in the finale. Obviously, we knew Jordan secured himself a spot. And in fact, he was the first name to be called, followed by, get ready for it, Emily Ann Roberts and Barrett Baber. So we have three in the finale so far. Six are still left standing on the stage. Three are going to be sent home, and three are singing for the Twitter instant save. Amy Vashel, Brayden Sunshine, and Shelby Brown were unfortunately sent home, leaving Jeffrey Austin, Zach Seba, and Maddie Davis hoping to get your tweet to save them. They each performed a good and very finale-deserving performance, but I have to say, I'm not being biased here, we all know how much I love him, but Jeffrey had the best of the three. America did agree, and they sent Jeffrey Austin into the finale. So guys, your top four artists are from Team Adam, Jordan Smith, Team Gwen, Jeffrey Austin, Team Blake, Barrett Baber, and Emily Ann Roberts. So who's going to be crowned the winner of Season 9? Watch the two-part finale next Monday and Tuesday with all-star performances from The weekend: Sam Hunt, Justin Bieber, Coldplay, and Missy Elliott. I'd be shocked if Adele and Rihanna aren't performing, but it's not confirmed, so don't say anything, guys. Make sure you tune into The Voice Recap next week as we will be discussing everything about the finale, and I'm also going to give you some behind-the-scenes details that aren't shown on the show. Make sure you guys come back for that, but in the meantime, make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, at Kevin Zellman, and tweeting me, or tweeting in general, using hashtag voice recap, because I have so much more to say about this last week on The Voice, but I'm out of time here, so I really want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week for the finale. Bye, guys.